I first started shooting time lapses years ago, and for a long time, my results were just not very good. I didn't know what camera settings to use. I didn't know how to choose a good location or how to look for the right atmospheric conditions to get those jaw-dropping time lapses that I was after. But since joining the Arsenal team, as part of my job, I've spent weeks and weeks shooting nothing but time lapses to test our time lapse feature. And through that whole process, I've learned a lot about how to shoot good time lapses and also how to avoid wasting time on terrible ones. In this video, I'm going to three different locations to show you how to do just that. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be covering a lot in this video, so if you're looking for something specific, use the video chapters in the timeline slider below to get to what you need faster. Cool? So just to be clear, I still shoot plenty of time lapses that won't see the light of day because things just didn't work out. Photography is this crazy mixture of skill, educated decision making, and dumb luck. The key I've found is to develop your photography skills and your ability to make educated decisions in order to stack the odds in your favor for a successful shot. Now if you can do that, then you'll be ready when you do get lucky and the light is amazing in a spectacular location and you can even make some good images out of a less than perfect situation. This video is gonna be filled with tons of tips on how to take your time-lapse photography to the next level, so let's get started. Made it to my first location, which is here in the great state of with time lapses, I'm always looking for motion to capture. You can capture motion in things like running water or people or street traffic or the stars or even just clouds, which is what I'm going for here. And this location is composed mainly of non-moving objects like trees and rocks. So my success here with this time lapse is really hinging highly upon something interesting happening in the sky. Now, the forecast was supposed to be partly cloudy through the evening, and I was hoping for cloud textures and maybe even a sunset. I don't know that that's gonna happen. We've got really blue skies right now. But the forecast for sunrise still is looking good, so this may turn into a sunrise shot. I'm gonna keep looking around for a composition I like and take it from there. Well, my composition's set. Unfortunately, tonight the, the skies are pretty darn clear, so the sunrise still does look good as far as the forecast is concerned. And now I've got a little time to burn before the park closes, so I'm gonna go uh, maybe down in the valley and explore a little bit and see uh, see what else I can find. Now when I'm trying to decide where I'm gonna shoot on any given day, I usually spend some time looking at about a handful of different weather apps to make sure the conditions are right so I don't waste time driving hours to a specific location. Along with sunrise and sunset times, I'm regularly checking things like cloud cover, as well as the type of clouds to be expected like high clouds versus low clouds, uh, wind velocity and direction, surf height, tide levels, fire smoke, and if I'm planning on having my time lapse go into the night, I need to check things like sky clarity and light pollution, moonrise and moonset times, and even the Milky Way's position at that time of the year. And this is what I meant about stacking the odds in your favor. It doesn't mean things always work out, but it certainly does help my chances. You can think of it like a poker player who knows their odds and how to play them. Now, I am terrible at poker, but I do know how to open an app and look at it. We're gonna leave a list of all of our favorite weather apps in the description below.
it back it's the next morning and it's looking fantastic typically when i'm shooting a cloud time lapse i like the clouds to be moving either toward or away from camera uh, if the clouds are moving side to side in your frame and there's no z-axis movement it seems to make the shot less interesting in my opinion and i think that's because cloud movement that's moving toward or away from camera almost makes it look like the camera's moving through space um, whereas side to side cloud movement um, just tends to make things look a little bit more flat. Okay, so now I need to compose my shot. Now, time lapses are typically shot horizontally, but with TikTok and Instagram, vertical video is useful here as well. Uh, but for this shot, I'm gonna stick with a traditional horizontal orientation. So in this shot, there's actually not much moving in the foreground, um, or so I thought last night. So it, it actually has changed from trying to shoot this last night when there was actually no sun line coming down maybe in the morning from the sunrise, and I was just focused on clouds. So I was gonna maybe have my composition favor the sky a lot more and have the bottom third be the ground and have the top two thirds of my frame be the sky. But this morning, I have a chance at uh, sun actually coming up and not being blocked by clouds and getting this, uh, t the time lapse of this sun line coming down on these rocks. And so I actually wanna include more of my mid ground in the shot now. So luckily my clouds are right where they need to be. I'm showing, I think enough sky in my composition to be able to get that and then hopefully get the, uh, the sunlight coming down as well. And because I can't predict what's gonna happen in my frame over the next couple of hours, I'm actually gonna shoot at a slightly wider focal length than what I need for my final composition. And this will give me the, the flexibility to reframe and post a little bit if needed. Okay, my composition is set. I need to decide my interval and camera settings. Now, some cameras come with a built-in intervalometer, or you can use an external one like this, but, and I know I'm biased here, I'm gonna use Arsenal because it's the best, most comprehensive time-lapse tool on the market, period. Before I dive in though, I wanna cover two of the major challenges of shooting good time-lapses. The first is not knowing if your time-lapse is any good until you get it back on the computer. Now I've definitely had my fair share of time lapses that I thought were good until I saw them later on the computer and they ended up being not that great. The second challenge comes when trying to shoot a time lapse as your lighting changes dramatically. Like say when you're going from dark stormy clouds to full sun or going from day to night. Photographers either have to try to change settings manually over time, which is impossible, or rely on their camera's auto exposure like aperture priority mode. The problem with shooting with your camera's aperture priority mode is that as your scene gets darker, it becomes more and more difficult for your camera to measure light. Now, if you're in a situation where you have plenty of artificial light available, like say in a city, you may not be too bad. But if you wanna shoot something like a Milky Way when you need it to be as dark as possible, then aperture priority mode just flat out doesn't work. Okay, all that being said, Let's dive into the app. All right, so within the Arsenal app, if I navigate to the time-lapse screen, the first thing I see is Smart Lapse. Now, Smart Lapse is the quickest and simplest way to start a time-lapse with Arsenal. All I have to do is press the trigger button. Literally, that's it. And then Arsenal starts a time-lapse with an interval based on the available light that I have and then completely handles exposure for me. And this is where one huge time-lapse problem is solved. We built a custom exposure algorithm to manage exposure settings at any time of day or night. So this ensures that no matter what lighting changes you throw at Arsenal, it will smoothly correct and adjust for proper exposure throughout the entire time lapse. You can go from day to night to day to night and beyond as long as you have enough power and a big enough memory card for your camera. Arsenal then continuously builds a video preview of your time lapse as it's being shot. And this is where my second big problem for time lapses is solved. With Arsenal, I can quickly see how my shot is progressing and decide either to invest more time in it or scrap it and move on with my life. And this is huge. And Smart Lapse is just one of the time lapse modes we've built. So next in the time lapse screen is custom. And if I tap that, I get a few options. Within fix, I get three options. The first is auto. Auto allows me to choose my interval and number of shots, but Arsenal handles all the exposure changes for me. Now you can see as I slide this interval and number of shots settings, it's constantly updating my run time and my playback time. This allows me to, to know how long my time lapse is actually going to take to shoot, and then also how much actual usable footage I'll have uh, later if played back at 24 frames per second. Even while shooting a time lapse, Arsenal gives you the final shot duration if played back at 24 frames a second. So if I see that I already have five usable seconds of a final shot, I can you know end things early because I'm tired and it's cold. So, yeah. So let's take a step back for a second. 
what should my interval be in the first place? Well, that really depends on what you want your final time lapse to look like and the speed that your subject is moving. In general, the faster your subject is moving, the shorter your interval should be. And just the opposite, the slower your subject is moving, the slower, longer your interval should be. I can do this. So with fast moving subjects like people or running water or fast moving clouds, you wanna do a two to five second interval-ish, um, and that will help to slow the motion down, make it more elegant and less chaotic. But with something slower moving like the Milky Way, you probably wanna hit a 30 second interval to give your camera enough time for exposure. Pro tip, because Arsenal needs to import every image after the camera has had a chance to shoot, process, and write it to the camera's memory card, your maximum shutter speed should always be a few seconds slower than your interval. So if I have a 30 second interval, then my max shutter speed should be about 25 seconds to give the camera enough time to shoot and process and write it to its card and Arsenal to import the image as well. So after you start your time lapse, Arsenal will actually warn you that your shutter speed and processing times are not fitting within the interval that you set. And so in this case, you can simply go in and shorten your maximum shutter speed, or you can tap advanced options just below the live view in this menu, I can have Arsenal shorten my shutter speed to keep everything within my interval that I set. Also within this menu is an option to keep your mirror up between shots. If you're shooting with a DSLR, there's a mirror inside the camera that allows you to see through your lens like a periscope. When you take a photo, the mirror pops up to allow light to hit the sensor and then immediately comes back down in order for you to be able to see through your lens again for the next shot. Now this constant up and down motion actually introduces vibrations into your image, especially if you're shooting at a long shutter speed or on a long focal length. Now, locking it up gets rid of that, but the downside is, is that it actually takes more energy from your camera's battery to keep it locked up like that. So if you're shooting on a DSLR and you have a long time lapse and you're just running on your camera's battery, I would recommend disabling this option. End of educational tangent. For this shot, I'm gonna use Arsenal's fixed auto mode. Um, because the clouds aren't moving too fast in the frame, I'm gonna set my interval to six seconds. I can tap in the live view to uh, focus on my mountains in the background, and then tap the trigger to start. So if I tap here, I can see the video preview of what I've shot so far, just a few frames. Uh, and this will continue to update as new shots come in. Things are looking good so far. I'm gonna let this go for a while and see what happens. While I'm running that time lapse, I wanted to take a second to talk about composition. This is something that's a little hard to grasp when you first start off in photography. I mean, first of all, composing for time lapses is different than composing for uh, traditional landscape photos. So things that are in motion really become your subjects versus uh, something like a, a leaf in your foreground in a traditional landscape composition. Secondly, People just work differently when trying to find compositions. Some people go with their initial gut reaction and stick to it, and other people tend to hunt around forever until they find something they really like. Everyone wants to have original compositions when starting off in landscape photography or time-lapse photography, but I think when you first start, it's really helpful to spend some time on something like Instagram to get a sense of how other seasoned photographers compose their shots. And then when you go out to that same location or even a different location, you can kind of emulate their compositions to start to get a sense of how compositions come together out in the real world. Now, saying that out loud rubs me the wrong way. I don't just wanna copy other people's compositions, but through my own experience, I realized that it takes time and practice to really develop your own style. And then finding compositions becomes something that's more of an instinct than something that you really have to scratch your head over. I will say that when you first arrive at a location, it is a helpful practice to set the tripod aside, take the camera in hand, and just play around with compositions. You know, different angles, different focal lengths, and see what jumps out at you. I think that's enough on composition. Let's get back to the shot. All right, so the sun is climbing in the sky. It's starting to get a little harsh, so I don't think things are getting much more interesting here. I'm good to probably end this and to move on to our next location, which I am super excited about. Well, I made it to my second location, which is uh, in 
and I can see it right over my shoulder, which is which is nice because it's not a long hike. But um, this is my first time, so I'm excited to see what we find down there and what the conditions are like. You know, this looks like from what I can see just from here, it looks like high flow. I don't really know this river too well, so. This part of the country is known for its waterfalls and at certain ones, if the conditions are right, you can actually get swirling foam at the base of the falls. And that's what I'm here to try to capture today. So finding a composition for a time-lapse is a little bit more difficult than a still image only because you're gonna invest hours of your time into this one shot. So you wanna make sure all your settings are dialed in, your composition is perfect, that you're happy with everything before you make what could be a two or three or four hour commitment at a certain location with a certain shot. So I'm planning on shooting this horizontally and I think I want my swirl of foam to be on the bottom third and my waterfall to be on the top third. Something Yeah, something like that looks pretty good actually. Now because I'm not planning on having the time lapse go into the night, I can get away with some simple settings here. And while I could use the camera's internal intervalometer or an external one, I'm gonna use Arsenal's fixed basic time lapse mode, which allows me to go fully manual. So with that mode, I can choose my interval and camera settings without Arsenal changing any of those settings over time, but I still get the advantage of the video preview so I can check progress continuously. And you can even actually use your camera's shutter and aperture priority modes in fixed basic mode as well. So for this shot, I know I want about a half second shutter speed to create some motion blur in each shot. And then I also want to stop down a little bit to make sure everything's sharp from my foreground to my background. But be careful about stopping down too much because the more you stop down, the more lens diffraction becomes a noticeable issue. Now to focus, you can do this manually when you set your aperture you can actually roll it to infinity and then slowly rack it back until your foreground object is just in focus. And you've essentially found your hyperfocal distance for that aperture. But an easy way to do it is actually use Arsenal's multi-point focus where I can just pick my foreground and my background object and Arsenal picks all the right settings for me. But that'll be covered in a future video. All right, now that I have my aperture and, and shutter speed set, I can play with my ISO to find the proper exposure. That looks pretty good there. The last thing I need to do is set my interval. Now, because the foam swirl is actually moving relatively fast here, I need to slow that motion down by shooting a short interval, something like two or maybe three seconds for this shot. Okay, last thing I need to do is press the trigger button. And Arsenal starts the time lapse. Gives me my video preview right away. I'm good. I think I'm gonna go uh, relax somewhere. I don't know, I might go chill out. All right, so Arsenal's been running for a while. I kind of want to see how it turned out so far. Open up the app, press the video preview. Those foam swirls are crazy. There's a lot of swirls and stuff like that, but when you play it in fast motion over a time lapse, even with a two second interval, it's, this thing is nuts. So Arsenal's saying I have about 12 seconds of usable footage, so that's plenty. So I am actually good to end this right now. All right, if I go into the gallery, I can view the, the time lapse, I can save it to my phone, I can share it straight to social media, right from the app. It has never been easier to shoot and share incredible time lapses than with Arsenal. All right, I think it's time to pack it up and get out of here. We are on our way to our final destination to capture what could be the most difficult time lapse yet. This is the holy grail of all time lapses, aptly named the holy grail. We made it to the uh, to our final destination, the in the We're here to capture the historically elusive and difficult holy grail time lapse. The term holy grail is actually a photography term for any time lapse that spans day to night or night to day. And honestly, 
they're really difficult to successfully capture for a couple of reasons. First, just getting all your weather elements to line up perfectly is not easy. If you're shooting a cityscape as day transitions into night, that may not be too bad, but say you're on the Oregon coast and you want cloud textures during the day, a sunset in the evening, and then for everything to clear out at night so you can get a beautiful view of the Milky Way, well, I mean, it's a lot that needs to go right in one shot. It's not the right time of year to be shooting the Milky Way, so I'm gonna make this shot a little less complicated. But honestly, I'm still hoping for cloud textures during the day, uh, a, a sunset in the evening, and then for everything to clear out for my stars at night. And crazily enough, the forecast actually says I have a shot at this. So remember, stack the odds in your favor and hope for the best. Let's roll out. This place is incredible. I mean, every time I come here, I've been here probably six times, and it, it like it doesn't get old. This view from here of of all the bridges and stuff is just incredible. It's like you, it's like breezy today. You're like smelling the pine. You're smelling like the ocean spray. It's like the greens and the browns and the the oranges. And when the sun sinks lower in the sky and it gets like this golden rake of light across the hillside, the color of the water. I mean, the whole thing is just absolutely out of this world. If I could set up a, a tent here for the rest of my life, I'd probably do it. Wow, this place is so cool. So how do I execute a holy grail? Well, let's start with the old school way first. Traditionally, the only way to do it well was to change your settings manually and monitor progress closely over your entire time lapse. But this requires hours of your undivided attention. And even then it's just, it's difficult to pull off successfully. I'll take you through a quick tour of how to do it traditionally, just to give you a sense of how difficult it is to pull off well. So first I have to put my camera into fully manual mode. Now this includes ISO and white balance, your focus, and then I want to lock my aperture to wide open. Um, this lens opens up to a 1.8, so I'm going to open that up to 1.8 and lock it there for the duration of the time lapse. And then I'll have to change my shutter speed and ISO over the duration to compensate for proper exposure. Now in the beginning I'll change my shutter speed a lot because I want to keep my ISO as low as possible for as long as possible to keep noise levels down. And on top of that, my entire exposure needs to actually shift down about a stop as I enter into twilight. And this is because if I expose my night shots like I expose my day shots, they'll actually be overexposed. They'll look too bright uh, for night. So night shots need to be underexposed by about a stop or so to look like they should, to look proper. That change needs to happen again smoothly over time. So you'll need to go from hitting perfect exposure during the day to as you slip into twilight, you know, slowly adjust your exposure down a stop as correct exposure but then again, do this smoothly over time. And finally, after checking critical focus on the deepest background object I can, I would need to choose an interval of something around 30 seconds or so, so that I have enough time in the astrophotography part of the time lapse to pull off about a 25 or so second exposure. So you might be asking yourself, why would I lock my aperture and not change it like the other settings during my time lapse? Well, if you change your aperture too much during your shot, it can create a noticeable shift in vignette pattern, not to mention your depth of field. And this can look a little strange in your final time lapse. Lenses, especially wide angle lenses, can have various amounts of vignetting at the corners and edges of the frame, like these examples that you're seeing here. And on top of that, the wider the aperture you use, the more noticeable the vignette will be. So for this shot, I'm using a 14 millimeter lens set to f1.8. So there's definitely going to be some noticeable vignetting and you can correct vignette in post, but it's really hard to do that if it's changing 
throughout your shot. So if I start shooting at an f8, which has almost no noticeable vignette, and then slowly adjust to an f1.8, I'm gonna see that shift in vignette pattern, and that looks weird. So to avoid all of this, I'm gonna set my aperture and lock it at the widest setting I'll know I'll need for the entire shot, which for this time lapse is f1.8. Now some cameras have decent internal intervalometers, but some are just unreliable. So an external one might be the way to go here if you're shooting the traditional method. Or, or, and I'm gonna go out on a limb here, you could use Arsenal to automate and simplify this entire process. And that's what I'm gonna do for tonight's shot because I don't feel like babysitting it all night. All right, so I have Arsenal on the camera. I've got my shot recomposed and I've got some serious power plugged in because I think I'm gonna try to let this thing go all the way to sunrise if possible. Now Arsenal's gonna use that same auto exposure algorithm but within the Holy Grail mode, it only operates within the limits that I give it. So if we look within the Holy Grail mode, we see sliders down below and these buttons that create your limits on each slider. Now, for example, if I don't want my shutter speed to be any shorter than 1 4,000th, but also no longer than 25 seconds, then I drag those limit buttons around to set those values. And the same goes for aperture and ISO. And if for some reason I want the image to be either lighter or darker, then what Arsenal is giving me, I can use the EV slider to make custom adjustments to Arsenal's auto exposure. If I look just above the EV slider, I see the word prioritize. Now if I tap that, I can actually reprioritize the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO sliders with the side handles that appear. And this is important because Arsenal prioritizes these sliders in a top to bottom fashion. Now what this means is that Arsenal will start with the darkest setting it can get away with for proper exposure on the top slider and slowly bring that up until it's maxed out within your limit range. And then it'll move on to the second slider and do the same thing before it even begins to touch the third and final slider. You can almost think of it in a linear way where Arsenal starts with slider one and slowly fills the bucket up until it overflows into slider two until it finally spills over into slider three, the bottom slider. You can change these slider priorities and the limit settings on the fly as Arsenal is shooting the time lapse and Arsenal will slowly readjust accordingly. But keep in mind that Arsenal is trying to make smooth adjustments over time so things look smooth and graceful. So you're not gonna see these adjustments right away. They won't be on the next frame. They'll be set and adjusted slowly over the next handful of frames or more. So the EV slider makes adjustments to the sliders below, but in reverse order. So it's gonna play with that leading edge of exposure on slider two to adjust up or down depending on where you set your EV slider. And if it hits a lower or upper limit setting within the slider that it has, then it'll jump up or jump down into the next slider to keep up with the changes that you want. If I don't want one of these sliders to be moved at all, then I can slide both of the limit settings together to lock the value there. And like I said before, I typically do this with my aperture slider, locking it wide open so I don't see that noticeable shift in vignette pattern or depth of field. All right, now, so typical settings for a day to night holy grail time lapse that I would use in a setting like this would be to have my shutter speed be no shorter than 1 4 thousandth, no longer than 25 seconds, locking my aperture wide open to 1.8 for this lens, and setting my ISO to base, which is 64 for the Z7, all the way up to 10,000 or so. So the settings that you use will depend on a few things, like uh, you know, how much noise you're comfortable with in your images, depending on your camera's noise performance, how much motion blur you want in each individual shot, and also the available light at your location. Now I have my shutter speed prioritized above my ISO because I want Arsenal to adjust and max out my shutter speed before it begins touching the ISO to keep my noise levels as low as possible for as long as possible for my shot. Now, because my aperture is locked uh, to 1.8, it doesn't really matter where it is in the priority list because it's not gonna change anyway. To end things, I can just press the trigger button again or Arsenal will end automatically when it's reached its set number of shots. Pro tip. Make sure your shot number is high enough. I always just max mine out at 10,000 because I don't want my time lapses ending prematurely without me knowing it. So I set mine to 10,000 and then I always manually end my time lapses by myself using the trigger button within the app. You're welcome. Now, Arsenal's Holy Grail mode actually isn't the only way you can shoot a Holy Grail within Arsenal. You can actually keep things really simple and use its fixed auto mode as well. And then you only have to choose your interval and your number of shots and Arsenal will handle everything for you. I will say if you're planning on going into the night with Arsenal's fixed auto, make sure you still set your interval to around 30 seconds to give Arsenal enough time for like a 25 second or so exposure when it needs it. Now, my compositions up to this point have been horizontal, but 
I'm actually trying a vertical one, as you can see behind me. Uh, I think this location, and specifically the way I'm shooting, is actually kind of, might be really cool for this vertical orientation. It's almost like this leading line of water up to what will be the stars in the sky in the top half of the frame. So I'm excited to see how it turns out. All right, so I have my exposure ranges set. The last thing I need to do is tap to focus on Arsenal's live view on a deep background object so that my stars are sharp when they come out. And the last thing I have to do is trigger. And Arsenal handles everything for me. I don't have to be here. I can go frolic among the ferns or stay warm in the van. Hey guys, I know this video should have ended like 20 minutes ago, but I totally forgot about the final mode within Arsenal time lapse, and that's slider. Slider still gives you the same auto, holy grail, and basic modes as before, but instead of having Arsenal trigger the camera, it allows for a slider or other external triggering device to trigger the camera, all while Arsenal handling the auto exposure and building those same video previews as before. And the reason I love this is that it allows me to use, to do a shoot, move, shoot, holy grail time lapse, which can be epic. A great slider time lapse usually has the camera parallax with the foreground in some way. And typically, I also like to include uh, compound movements like panning and tilting while the slider is sliding. So a typical shot would, would be starting at the right side of your slider, pointing down into the left, and as you slide to the left, uh, it points up into the right. But don't overdo these moves. A little goes a long way on this. So you just need enough movement to be graceful. I've always wanted to do uh, a slider time lapse where we slide past some mossy rocks to reveal a waterfall in the background. And that's what I have set up here. Uh, with that same move I just described, starting to the right and pointing down into the left and then sliding to the left and then reversing that action. Um, so I'll let you know how it turns out here in a second. I hope you guys like this tutorial on time lapses. We've got a lot more of these videos coming out in the near future, so hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date on how to take your photography to the next level. All right, let's get out of here.